Hello everyone, in this episode of the War on Zero series, first of all we will get the printer working again after the move. I haven't released a War on Zero episode since the move, so this will cover everything I did from the War on Zero since the move. So we will get the printer working again, configure it for the new Wi-Fi, fix the spool holder, replace the MGN7 rail, and then we will move on to the Nevermore micro air filter, which we printed in a previous video, but I wasn't able to turn that on because I didn't have the correct air filter materials, so now I do that. I have that. The active carbon and from that we will move on to some of the plans I have for the Volon Zero's future. But before that, thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCBWay offers cheap, fast and high quality PCB prototyping services. They also have a community website where you can easily find PCB designs that you might be interested in, including some Voron designs and including some of my designs. This lets you order the PCB very easily by just clicking the add to cart button without having to deal with the Gerber files. And this also supports the creator of the PCB as well. A portion of the sales go to the creator of the PCB. So a great way to A, find a PCB design that you might be interested in and B, also support the creator of the PCB. So both the PCB web website and the PCB web community website are linked in the description below. I opened up the Voron Zero. First of all, I removed the bottom panel and I closed it now, but uh, I had to switch the power supply from two to, uh, 230 volts to 115 volts. Next step is to do the uh, configure the Raspberry Pi to connect to the new Wi-Fi here. It's set up for the old Wi-Fi and it is also set up for static IP. Uh, that's how I did it in the old place so that uh, my network setup had some problems in the old place and uh, static, uh, sorry, permanent DHCP leases never worked. So, uh, yeah, it, that means I have to redo that setup as well on top of the SysID and whatever else. So, uh, I'll do that on the computer. And after that, we'll also do the MGN7 repla uh, rail replacement on the X axis. Uh, after that, we should be able to print. And uh, as for the spool holder, forgot to talk about that. The spool holder that was broken that I showed in the uh, workshop episode 3. Well, the plan was to reprint that, but now what I'm trying to do is glue it together and see how well it holds. If it works well, then, well, I guess there's no re need to reprint that, but if it doesn't, then, yeah, it's a simple reprint, and it still looked like it was go in good enough condition to actually hold a spool, so, uh, yeah, I'll be back with those done, I guess. I finally managed to get the Raspberry Pi to connect to the network. Yeah, to reach the command line, I had to connect to the Raspberry Pi using a very short Ethernet cable. That's the only cable I had lying around. But yeah, finally managed to get it to connect to the Wi-Fi. And yeah, here it is. So the Octoprint is working. Now the next step for me is to update all this crap. And then uh, we will do our first print. So here it is. I started my first print with the Voron Zero after the move. And right now I'm just printing a Voron Cube, as you can see. Uh, so far so good, nothing majorly uh, wrong with it. The calibration was fine as well, like the old settings still work just fine. You'll notice that the display isn't on right now, so I had to update Clipper. In fact, I had to do the uh, entire Raspberry Pi setup, so that's what I meant when I said it didn't go as well. Uh, I was just doing a sudo up, up get upgrade, just to update some of the stuff in the Raspberry Pi, and then I accidentally unplugged the Raspberry Pi, so rip SD card I had to start from scratch I was able to recover my uh, printer.cfg from that SD card it is readable it's just for some reason the Raspberry Pi doesn't like that SD card anymore even with a completely just new flashed stuff it still doesn't like it so yeah I don't know but as I said I was able to recover the printer.cfg on Windows and yes you can see the Linux file system on Windows if you use a third party software I actually made a video about that it's in the card up there and linked in the description below if you're interested but uh, yes I, as I said I was able to recover the printer.cfg I was able to recover my old time-lapse files that uh, were still on the printer for some reason don't know why and uh, stuff like that so it wasn't too bad but that also meant that I had to update Clipper most people keep their clipper up to date. I don't because you, after that you usually have to also flash your MCUs with the new firmware. Uh, that is a pain. And especially if you have something that's STM32 based, you have to make sure it enters DFU mode. And yeah, that, that means, yeah, it's, it's, it's a pain. I have to tear the printer open again and that's why I didn't do it. Uh, yeah. I'll restart the sprint, probably just a bad, uh, bad leveling thing. So, anyway, so that's why I, uh, that's, oh, I lost my train of thought. Uh, yeah, that's why I didn't update the display, but yeah, 
at, at least the clipper is up to date, I guess. I also had to do the printer.cfg because I was still keeping the rotation distance stuff. I still didn't update those, but that's how old the clipper on my Voron Zero was. But yeah, anyway, let me cancel the print. And I'll start, there we go. And I'll start a new print with the bed screws a bit adjusted. I did go through the adjustment once, but the texture side of the PEI is kind of tricky to get it working well, so that's the problem there. And next time I think it'll adhere fine. The print was going okay up to that point anyway, so anyway, BRB. Well, I got my first print from the Voron Zero, the test cube. And, well, it looks fine other than some uh, this stuff. I don't know if you can see near the bottom. Uh, that's probably mostly to do with the bad leveling, so that is something fixable. So here is the rail I removed from the Voron Zero, it's this LDO MGN7 rail. This is uh, from the OG uh, LDO group buy kits, they, back then they didn't do full Voron Zero kits and yeah, they just did a partial run of some Voron parts as a group buy on the Voron, Zero's, uh, Voron server for the Voron 0.0 back in the day. So. This is from that kit. It's an MGN7 rail. It worked well up to this point and I was impressed by the quality for the price at least. Obviously a genuine high one is probably better but uh, you know it was slightly more expensive than Robotic but at the time I had a lot of problems with Robotic MGN9 rails so I was pretty happy with this. Uh, the problem was uh, it's not that easy to show but basically I think the carriage was moving a little bit like and um, yeah that was causing the problems and my initial prints uh, I don't know when I'm editing this into the video but right now the Voron Zero is printing and my prints with the new rail look a lot better so I'm pretty sure this fixed the problem now this could still be used for something that's not as important as a 3D printer like I don't know maybe some drop rail or something like that so I'm not going to throw this away just like I didn't throw my uh, failed MGN9 robotic rails but uh, yeah, I'm not going to use this on the printer. So, as I said, I re already replaced it and already the print problems are fixed. So, it was the rail. I did the firmware flashing for the display, so that's ready. And I tested that already, it works. Also connected the uh, uh, Nevermore Micro to the Dwight Wi-Fi here. For the Nevermore Micro on the Voron Zero, I used the Nevermore uh, printer carbon that I ordered from DFH along with the Micron stuff. So uh, this is something really important, so I should mention this. That you don't necessarily have to use the Nevermore brand, but you have to use the right kind of active carbon. I made a video about this in the past, but often active carbon is acid washed or acid activated, and that means there's some acid left on the active carbon. And if you let that run through your printer, especially with a recirculating filter, uh, you get this. Now uh, this is uh, this rusted more since the last video. This wasn't this rusty in that last video, but you can again watch that video if you're interested in that. But uh, yeah, you definitely don't want this in your printer, not on your linear rails either, like not just screws. So uh, yes, you definitely need to use the correct type of active carbon. I turned on the printer, did the clipper configuration for the Nevermore Micro, connected the fan before that obviously, and uh, yeah, turned the fan on and realized it wasn't turning, like I uh, didn't hear any noises, there was no air airflow I could feel if I put my hand anywhere near this. Uh, opened the Nevermore Micro with the fan sh still on. Uh, then, just like a 10 second or so after that, a uh, horrible smell started uh, coming from the fan and that's when I realized, I, I didn't see the smoke, but I'm pretty sure it was magic smoke, so... So I turned off the printer before I tr uh, triggered the smoke alarm. If I was any good at making YouTube videos, I'd record for before that, but... Didn't feel like risking starting a fire, so... Sorry about that, uh, but yeah, I think this was a 12 volt fan and I think I connected it to 24 volts, I think that's what happened. I definitely connected it to 24 volts, but I think this is a 12 volt fan, that's the guess. There is no label on this, so I can only guess. There is nothing obviously burned around here, so... I don't know for sure, but I don't want to risk this fan, using this fan again, because it definitely smelled like magic smoke, so... And this is the issue. I thought I only had 24 volt ones in stock. Well, I have both. These are the exact same size, so... Yep, I'm pretty sure that was 12 volts. But uh, anyway, it's just a fan. I'll replace it with 24 volts. Uh, so uh, yeah, it now has the 24 volt fan connected. So uh, I'm just going to turn it on on full speed and see how it goes. And uh, yeah, it's definitely working. 
uh, airflow path is really restrictive so that uh, noise isn't too unusual but I definitely don't want a printer that's this loud so let me see uh, lowering the speed if that works or not so this is half speed it's definitely making noise so it's definitely still running and uh, yeah there's still some airflow the airflow path is really restrictive so obviously airflow uh, how much airflow isn't also going to be a lot so that's not surprising but it still runs on uh, half speed it's still also pretty loud but uh, considering the fact that my Warren Zero is also pretty loud yeah when this is printing this is not going to be too bad I guess but um, yeah it works now I want to talk about print quality problems and after that I will talk about something about the Warren Zero's future so if you don't care about print quality you can skip to that but Basically, I had four print quality problems and two of them I managed to fix. One of them was about the layer lines and that was about the x-axis rail because the tool head was wobbling front to back, as I said in the beginning of the video. So that is fixed. Another problem was the hot hand stopping extruding at some point, which is, well, the extruder stopping extruding, I guess, but the hot hand getting uh, cloaked. And uh, that, that was a pretty simple fix, obviously. It's, I just had to increase the temperature. Now, the two issues that aren't fixed are one of them is the something to do with the tool has traveled. Basically, the printer does its movements. And then uh, if you're talking about something like a curve or a circle, which is, requires a ton of commands to be sent to the MCU because you, can't, you don't really represent uh, curves and circles uh, in G-code, at least not for 3D printing. I know some other things exist, but not for our use case. Uh, it means that you have to send a ton of commands in a relatively short period of time and I think that's what's happening and uh, there is a communication issue I'm assuming and yeah the basically the tool head stops for a second and then continues to do its thing which uh, causes some zits to appear on the sides of the prints which is definitely not ideal and I wasn't able to fix that but I think that has something to do with the Duet Wi-Fi. My Duet Wi-Fi wasn't in the world's greatest condition and I have more to say on that later in the video. So I think that's to do with that. It could also be a USB cable, but I did try replacing the USB cable and I wasn't able to fix that. And no, it's not the Raspberry Pi. I did check Raspberry Pi's usage. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3, which is kind of suspicious, but no, it's not Raspberry Pi 3. I did check, so. Uh, yeah, I think the MC, it, it was something to do with the Duet Wi-Fi, but I do have something more to say on the Duet Wi-Fi later in the video. Another problem I wasn't able to fix was to do with the Z-axis wobble. It means I should probably do a, a complete teardown, but uh, yeah, that's a pain in the ass. So I didn't do that and started working on a client project for something unrelated to the channel, but while I was doing that, uh, something else happened, and that is the Duet Wi-Fi stopped responding completely. And, well, not exactly. Uh, basically, it works for 5 to 10 minutes, and that stops working. Essentially, that's what's going on. The Raspberry Pi is fine, and Raspberry Pi connects successfully and stays connected to the uh, display successfully, which is a separate MCU, so that's not it either. So, it's definitely Duet Wi-Fi, and my Duet Wi-Fi was in the world's greatest condition, as I said. So solution to obvious solution to that is just to replace that and i do have an skr mini e3 v2.0 so i could just swap that but honestly with all of these problems and uh probably some something else mechanic wrong with my printer as well it's probably makes sense to uh, do a complete assembly of the printer which honestly i'm not feeling like doing at this moment there is also a war on 0.2 around the corner they been teasing that for a while so they will announce that at some point i don't know when that will be war on design works on extended valve time so who knows when that will be but it will happen at some point so uh, you know i could just wait for the war on 0.2 and go with that i do have some alternatives in mind basically there are a lot of war on zero uh, major war on zero modes uh, go to 3d printers for ants.com and you can see a ton of war on zero modes uh, there are a ton of cool mods and that those require a complete disassembly of the War of Zero which up to this point the reason I didn't do any of those is exactly that reason that working with 1515 extrusions is a pain in the ass and I was pretty happy with my War on Zeros a lot of the things on the War on Zero like the top hat I designed etc so yeah I don't know but at this point I guess, as I said I do uh, I need to do a teardown anyway so I'm really considering some of those 3d printers for ants printers or zero modes ones especially so uh, let me know if there's something you're interested in and i'll definitely consider it i don't know we'll go maybe go back to world 0.2 i don't know but there won't be a video on 0.1 for a while so which is the reason why this video is kind of short yeah anyway that's it for this video i hope you still enjoyed it if you did please leave a like down below and thanks for watching